For baby boomers in the 1960s, the Beatles were the bomb. The Fab Four inspired something more than fandom, more like idolatry. Packed stadiums, record sales by the millions. Does all that hair help you sing? Definitely, yeah. All the while leading cultural shifts from haircuts to psychedelia. It was like being in the eye of a hurricane. You know, you'd suddenly wake up in the middle of one, a concert or a happening, and think, what, what? How did I get here, you know? The last thing I remember was playing music in a club, and the next minute, this. The response to the group, the depth of their fans' devotion, was called Beatlemania. A fever that mystified and even angered many a grown-up. It was mainly parents, and they were against rock and roll, you know? Anyway, before the Beatles came along, I mean, people have been trying to stamp out rock and roll since it started. Why do you think that is? What, is the, what are they afraid uh, of? I always thought it was because it came from black music, and the words had a lot of double entendre in the early days. And it was sort of, you know, the white kids, our white, nice wasps are going to go crazy with all this moving their bodies. You know, and the music got to your body, and the Beatles just carried it a bit further, made it a little more white even than Elvis did. Their reign at their parade barely five years. The band broke up. For fans, it was devastating. Devotees debated the cause and took sides. John was the recipient of much of the blame. We just broke up out of sheer boredom, you know. And boredom creates tension. How can you get bored doing what you did? Because it was going on, it was not going anywhere, you know. We'd stop touring and that we, we'd just sort of say, Time to make an album, you know, go in the studio, and we, the same four of us will be looking at each other and playing the same licks. Lennon likened it to playing tennis with only one opponent. After a few years, you'd know all their moves. Yeah, it just got like um, a marriage that doesn't work or something. Each Beatle then followed his own distinct path, but it was Lennon who made the sharpest turn. In Yoko Ono, he found a soulmate, a musical inspiration, and philosophical partner. Lennon and Ono's coupling, breakup, and recoupling made headlines. The two skillfully turned celebrity to their advantage. And we knew whatever we did was going to be in the papers, mm -hmm. you know. So we decided to utilize the space we would occupy anyway by getting married with a commercial for peace and also a theatrical event. And the theatrical event we came up with, which utilized the least energy with the maximum effect, was to work from bed. And what we virtually had was a seven-day press conference in bed. And the story that came out was John and Yoko do bed in for peace. And we were just promoting peace, like you promote any product. John Lennon, the eldest Beatle, the man his fans considered the smartest, most soulful of the Fab Four, was out of the eye of the hurricane. And he found shelter from the storm in New York City. Having gone through the Beatlemania thing, Nowadays, it's nothing like that. I mean, I can walk down the street and somebody will say, Oh, hi, John. I might sign one autograph, two autographs. And I don't get hassled. And I went through that period where I actually couldn't go anywhere. And so now it's like, heaven, I can go and eat. We go and eat. We go to the movies. We go wherever we want. Which makes what happened 40 years ago all the more tragic. For John Lennon was no longer a Beatle. His life and his music was his own. And when you think of someone of the of the superstar status of a John Lennon to be able to live in New York in those days and basically be left alone, Lennon once said about New York, if I'd lived in Roman times, I'd have lived in Rome. America is the Roman Empire of our age, and that's why I live hmm. in New York City. Wow. Wow, and I bet you today, if you walk by 72nd Street yeah. and that Dakota, there'll be flowers out. I think every year at this time, there are people who just and remember him, right? And, and Hoda, all year long, because we live on, in, the norm, in normal life, live on the Upper West Side, yeah. I walk my dog I, once or twice a week. Somebody says, can you tell me how to get the strawberry field? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right across the street wow. in the park. All right, yeah. Harry. Thank you so much. Thank you, Harry. A great find. A mm -hmm. treasure.